Well, apologies for late arrival. The road back in Bournemouth couldn't find the road out easily. So anyway, we're here. Good to be with you all this morning. And we look to the Lord to bless his word to us. So would you open, please, to Matthew chapter 11, please. Matthew chapter 11. Just a few verses at the end of the chapter. Matthew 11, I'm reading from verse 28 to 30. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. The end of the chapter. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Would you go on into the letters now to find Philippians, please, chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. <coughs> the beginning of the chapter. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 1. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look Look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. <coughs> Let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus also, <coughs> who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal <coughs> with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a servant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance <coughs> as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross. Therefore, high, therefore God has also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Notice verse 7 and 8, please, would you? The humility of the Lord Jesus he made himself of no reputation, verse 7, taking the form of a servant and coming in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Going back to Matthew and learning from also the Lord's own humility and going to the point of the cross, would you go back to where we were in Matthew, please, and look at the last Three verses, end of Matthew chapter 11, 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. A yoke of course, binds two, in this case, the fault of animals. A yoke binds the two animals together, the experienced animal and the novice. And the one would lead the other, of course. And the yoke of the stronger animal, leading the younger animal, would lead and guide in their work. And uh, the strong one would redirect and direct the weaker animal in learning the way that he would go in his work. And so you and I are in exactly the same way, yoked to the Lord Jesus Christ. We follow the way he leads. We follow the set path he has for our lives in our worship and our walk with him and the way that lies ahead of each one of us. So we're yoked to Christ. So obviously this no value whatever in wanting of our own selfish way when we're yoked to him because chafing at the yoke, wanting to go our own way of life is not Christ's way of life. 
for we are yoked to him and we go his way, we go his walk, and we follow his path that he set for each one of us in our Christian life, of course. And chafing against the word of God is hurtful. To want our own way instead of the way of Christ is hurtful. But that is a danger for our lives. So take Christ's yoke, take Christ's way, and go with him, yoke together with him in the path that is set for us, which is in obedient worship and service for him as well. His set paths, he has a set path for your life and for mine. Let him lead us on that set path, a way of worship, a way of serving him, a way of our Christian walk and our witness to other people, our sharing fellowship together, loving the Lord and getting together in fellowship around his word. That is the set path that he has for all of us. We're weak when we don't gather together. We're strong when we gather in a fellowship together, of course. So his path is a rest for our souls, going his way, which is always better than our own selfish way, which is often hard upon us. And it's a rest due, of course, to his finished work at the cross. He has dealt with our sin, removed them as far as east is from the west. Our transgressions are buried into the deepest sea to be remembered no more. Hallelujah. Your sins are gone from east to west, and you can't measure that distance. But, of course, for me... Think about the yoke. It's a very firm instrument, isn't it? A strong piece of wood. When one animal is yoked to the other, the weaker one has to go the way of the stronger one. And so it is for you and I. We're yoked to Christ. And we're the weaker one, and he's the stronger one, and he will lead us his ways. This is important for us all. To, our own, to go our own self will is hurtful to chafe at the yoke, and it's not easy to bear that. He's willing to lead us along his set path for our Christian life. As you learn of him and learn from him. Learn of him is in the authorized. Learn from him is in the New King James, which I was reading. To learn from him. Let him teach us his ways. Learn from him. The way that he set before us. Learn of him. Looking at the example of his life. In obedient service to his father in humility and willingness and sacrifice in his life, of course. And so it applies to us as well. Look at verse 29 in Matthew 11 with me once more. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. You will find rest for your soul. Humility, gentleness of Christ's life, which led him, of course, to Calvary's cross. The word of his father for that, why he came. So often that when we are yoked to Christ, there are times when we have burdens in our life down here in this type of world we're in. And we have burdens and we have cares. We have concerns. And we all have those. Let's carry them to the Lord Jesus as we're yoked to him in those ways. He said, take my yoke upon you. Be willing. Don't chafe at it. And the word of the Lord for our lives, sometimes difficult. Lowliness, humility of mind and attitude is so important in the Christian life. Not wanting our way, chafing at the yoke, but being willing and being submissive and being humble to the way of Christ for our lives. Very practical. Everyday living is so there. And Jesus said, my yoke is easy. It's not hard to bear. When you work with me and walk with me and go my way, that's not chafing. That's going willingly the way of the Lord for our lives. And that's always the best way, of course, we know that. He has a set path for our lives, and he wants us to follow that as he directs us in our Christian life, as we walk with him, as I've said. And at the same time, he does carry our cares. Cast your burden upon the Lord, for he shall sustain you. Peter takes this on board because he was a fisherman. And when he cast his net into the Sea of Galilee, the stones surrounding the circular net would take it down to the, to the very bottom and it would trap the fish and he would lift the net up. But if he didn't cast the net, he would have no fish. If you don't cast your care upon the Lord, you still bear those cares. 
Much better to cast them, let them go. That's difficult, isn't it? I remember, I, I'm just like you, I suppose, I still take those cares back and still worry about them a bit. You know, cast your care. <coughs> let the net go. It will achieve its purpose. That's so important. Take my way. Take my yoke upon you. My burden is light. And I will carry you. I'll carry you even to hoar hairs, even to old age, the Lord said in Isaiah, I will carry you. I'll give you strength. I will support you. My yoke will carry you my way, and I will give you the strength I need, and you can walk with me when you're yoked to me. So important. That spiritual rest. No need to strive this and strive for that. And not to practice, if you like, a religious exercise. We're to walk with Jesus, which is much better. Yes, to go his way of humility and lowliness of mind and attitude is important. That means we're willing to be yoked to him and learn of the way that he has for each one of us. That's so very important. So the burdens we carry are lightened, are lifted up when he cares for us, he carries our cares. He understands us very fully, right through to the depth of our heart and center of our life. He understands us and knows the way that he wants for our lives. So he carries our cares and he carries his weights that are on our minds so often. Go with me on into the letters of the New Testament to Hebrews, would you please, if you're reading the scriptures or following it. Hebrews chapter 12, please. Hebrews chapter 12. Look at verses 12 and 13. Hebrews 12, 12 and 13. How to renew your spiritual vitality is the little heading here. That's not inspired, of course. Hebrews 12, verse 12 and 13. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet. Be yoked to Christ, the straight path. Make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated but rather be healed. <coughs> and pursue peace with all men and holiness without which no one must see the Lord. Holy, separated, sanctified, living for each one of us. We're called to strengthen our hands, strengthen those weaker knees, which sometimes our burdens make us feel like that. Things we carry, our cares, makes us feel like that. So be yoked to Christ in the way of humanity and holiness. He carries our care, he carries our weights that are heavy upon us, but yoke to him makes it easier because he carries them. He carries your burdens, he carries your cares, whatever it may be in daily living that we find ourselves in, in our daily living. Strengthen the hands that hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet. Be yoked to the Lord Jesus Christ. Go on, please, beyond James, after Hebrews, to Peter. First Peter, chapter 5. First Peter, chapter 5. <coughs> it's only a short message tonight, but straight to the point. 1 Peter, chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. 1 Peter 5, 6 and 7. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. And I think Peter quotes Psalm 55 there. As a fisherman, he knew what it was to cast a net, as I said, and let it go so that you have fruitful results. So and I can do that. He says that he may exalt you, means really he'll lift you up in spirit and mind. He'll lift you up, encourage you, you don't feel downcast, but lifted up, rising up, strengthen hands, strengthen knees to walk his way in the Christian life. Not easy down here, and we all know that very well. So as we had in Matthew 11, and I close with this very brief message this morning, learn from Christ. 
Not just learn of him, following his example, that's good of course, but learn from him. Let his word teach us the way that he set before us. Take the yoke of Christ upon yourself. Realize you are yoked to him. You are, you know. Realize it. So in that yoke, Christ's way has set path for your life and mine. In gentleness and humility, not striving against the yoke, but in gentleness and submissiveness and humility. That's the pattern for our Christian life, for your life and mine. Be yoked. You are yoked. Realize you're yoked to Christ. He set that for us. And that's the right way to have rest in your soul. Going his way. He knows the way. He knows the best for your life. All things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. You know Romans 8, 28, don't you? All things. Yes, all things. When we yoke to Christ and go his way, all things work together. We may not see them sometimes. We may wonder just the way we are to go in our Christian life. Certain events come our way and we wonder why. But the Lord's in command. All things work together for good to those who are called in Christ. That's certainly very true. So it's the right way to have rest in our souls, realizing who we're yoked to. He's a stronger animal, if you like. He's a stronger person. But we are yoked to him. To go his way is to really have rest in your spirit, mind, and soul. I keep that very brief, very short, straight to the point. As we get those back again at Matthew 11, 28, just read those verses again. Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30, just to close this morning, brief message, straight to the point. Jesus' own words to you and I this morning from here. Matthew 11, 28. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. Well, we can be like that in odd times in our lives. I will give you rest. I'll give you my peace. Peace of mind, peace in the center of your life, peace in your hopes, peace in your attitudes, peace governing in your life, which is being yoked to Christ, and you will find rest for your soul. Yes, that's peace. And my yoke is easy, it's not difficult. If you're Christ, but it's not difficult. The hard thing is to chafe against it. Take my yoke, it's easy, he said. My burden is light because I carry most of your burdens anyway. You might carry a little share of them, but he still carries them. Be yoked. You are yoked. Realize you're yoked to Christ. He's a stronger one leading you on. And he will lead you. You have everlasting life. You have that now. But he, he will lead you on, lead you on into heaven itself where he is. And he's coming soon for us without a doubt. So be ready, be ready to go, and you'll be still yoked to him even when we do go to be with Christ. It's, it's that togetherness, that's what yoke means, togetherness with Christ, walking his way, not chafing at the yoke, but walking his way. That's togetherness with him, because he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Never, 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 no, never. Five negatives in the Greek. He will never leave us nor forsake us. You're yoked to me, said the Lord, so how can I let you go? Of course he won't. Yoked together with Christ, it's a far better way. If you go willingly and humbly into the will of God for our lives. For we have eternal life started down here already. We have his salvation. We have his love and saving grace already. Realize we are yoked for better things to come. Amen for that. We've got a song now. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? Thank you. <laughs> 